Hello and welcome to the zoo. Today we're going to talk about the Internet of Things, but not from the technical or business standpoint, but rather from how this is going to take our jobs and change it. John Hall is joining me from England. Where are you in England, by the way? I'm back in Deal in Kent, right on the southeast corner of England. If, if you asked me about 15 hours ago, I was still in Houston, which uh, wasn't the plan, but Houston weather is uh, doing its thing at the weekend, so we were... I stumbled in earlier on with a two-year-old and uh, and a very tired family. And, uh, so slightly yeah. jet lagged and delusional. Uh, you have you're going to present this uh, uh, conference, or you hope to at least. Um, and you're taking an approach, or you want to look at the Internet of Things from how it is going to affect our day-to-day -day jobs, and not just IT workers' jobs, people's in general's yeah. jobs. Yeah. I mean, the, and, and I tend to think of this in, in the context, you know, we, we talk a lot about the context of, of digital services in general and digital transformation in companies and you know, every company now being a, a technology company. And, and, and the Internet of Things is just one of the many layers that, that is underpinning that. You know, that, that if, if you ask Gartner, there'll be 20 billion devices in, in, the, in the enterprise event. I think they've upped that to 23 billion in a recent report by 2020, which isn't far off. If you ask Cisco, they say 50 billion. I mean, Cisco uh, probably really? a lot of skin in the game on the networking side, so they probably want it to be 50 billion. But, but you know, whatever the number, it's going to be big. But, of course, these things are not just appearing spontaneously. They're, they're part of the fundamental structures of business, and, and they're part of the, the things that we, in, in service management, need to manage. So it, it's definitely of interest to everybody within IT and ITSM and, and more broadly within the business. And that's one thing I uh, asked on our recent chatter group, actually, that Future Biz we mentioned, is we have this internet thing, but there's no plan really for how to manage. We can't run data centers with a thousand servers in it without problems. Now you're going to add 50 billion items to it. Um, how will that, from, from an IT perspective, change? Uh, and how are we going to cope with that? There's going to be a couple of really dramatic changes from the IT point of view. The first is actually in the hardware. Um, if, you, if you think, you know, I, I can go, and this is the most English thing I'll say on this call, I can go to my local fish and chip shop, and they are using a little payment device. Uh, they use iZettle, which is a Swedish company, but there are many others, and they all look pretty much the same, and that's an important point. You know, and, and these are just little telephone-connected payment devices What's interesting is that this kind of technology is, is becoming more and more prevalent, but it's not built on the things that retail technology traditionally built on. You know, when, when I used to work in a retail job when I was at university, if the till went down at the point of sale failed, you went to a back room and you rebooted a PC. Yeah. Because everything was based on x86, on Windows. You know, most, most cash points are still on some, you know, most ATMs are on some terribly terrifyingly old version of Windows. But this stuff's built on cheap commodity smartphone components. You know, it's the same stuff that links up in smartphones. And, and right now, IT organizations are geared up to supporting x86 and Windows, but not so much in terms of discovering and supporting and managing this new breed of technology. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead. I've, I've looked at the Facebook data center up in northern part of Sweden. Are doing the same thing, they don't see the point of having the latest and great. They, they they take what they need, they get up and running, and this is what runs large part of Facebook. So it seems to be that commoditization seems to be a driving force. Call it cloud, call it Internet yeah. of Things, technology in general. Yeah, and you you buy whatever Internet of Things stuff you buy, whether you're buying stuff for the house or whether it's this good, you know, and retail is a good example, but there's lots of other examples of line of business stuff. As I say, it's it's pretty much commoditized hardware. So, so I'd argue, what I argue and what I'll be talking about at the, the service desk show is that actually the Internet of Things is a software revolution. It's not really a hardware revolution. The, the, that iZettel thing that the, the guy who runs my local chip shop has got, it, that you can get one that looks exactly the same from a different company, but the software is different. So they're buying standardized hardware. And, and what we need to be thinking about in, in the enterprise is, Actually, just like all software, it's going to have vulnerabilities. It's going to need patching. It's going to need support. You know, we, we, we think about the Internet of Things in terms of bits of, you know, little boxes and bits of plastic and things we wear. But actually, what, what's really going on is a lot of, you know, embedded new software. And, and 
some additional challenges. You know, you mentioned the data center, but we we we, we see, for example, a lot of industrial. We we have an oil company customer who's got thousands and thousands of miles of pipeline with lots of little monitoring devices. But those things, they're networked, but they're not networked on a great big high bandwidth backplane like everything in the data center is. I, pretend, I, I, I just, no, I, don't mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't know networking. I just said some words. I hope I got them yeah. right. No, but the, right. I used to go do networking. Sounds about right. Good, good. Uh, but, but if you think about it, we're now going to have business services fundamentally built on these small gadgets, these small internet of things, things. And they're going to be in little clusters, and the data flow will be much, much smaller, much, much slower between a lot of these things. Yeah, as I say, they're built on maybe three G radio and and all these you know lower lower spec pipes. So even the nature of you know what, what is a data center? If you've got five thousand devices along a pipeline and they're all communicating with each other because they're not all directly connected to a central point, then maybe that that's almost a data center. We, we we've got to think about the structures of IT how we you know and, and how we maybe reapply our support practices that have kind of been so ground in by big computers in big data centers yeah if you don't take the fish and chip stop uh, uh, and to expand that into mm. the offices and to manufacturing plants or what have you where does internet of things take businesses in general uh, how will that change i mean for example i think in in, in a short time smart offices, so to speak, you can come in and not only do you see where people are sitting, but where the noise level is high or low, where there is a lot of food yeah. traffic and no. Um, do you see that happening anytime soon, things like that, and what type of things yeah. can we expect? I mean, the Internet of Things is a huge commercial opportunity. I, I feel like I've talked about problems so far, you know, at least challenges, but but it's coming because it's so valuable. You know, and, just the other week, I was listening to a podcast on the subject, and, and it was talking about you know in in Californian vineyards, for example, now they can connect flow meters to each plant, which can detect the water going through the vine and water just the right amount accordingly. Which in California is a, a hot topic, I know. Yeah. Uh, so you know that that's an example of of, of truly commercially powerful use of technology of these small pieces of technology. So you can apply that to the office space. You can apply that to the data center, to you know the line of business in retail, in, in healthcare. You know it's very big in healthcare. This this kind of transformation, and and what's driving it is, is not the fact that it's just a nifty idea. It, it's genuinely worth billions and billions and billions of dollars in improved productivity, improved profitability. And so that alone, you know, regardless of all the challenges, it's going to shove it into the business whether IT likes it or not. Yeah. Well, it's it's happening in more interesting places than offices. Um, uh, there was someone who explained to me that in Japan, they measure how many steps each cow takes, at least one part. And based on the number of steps, they change the food ration uh, mm. for herds. And I thought, okay, so they didn't do that before. So it just it opens up, um, it, it finds problem we didn't realize we had, or it create efficiency we didn't realize we could achieve. Um, I wonder how that's going to work with humans. Do, do you think we can give in there things to become become more productive as knowledge workers? It's, it's an interesting challenge, isn't it? I mean, we, we're always told about you know technology is going to make us hugely more productive. Usually it kind of seems to make us work harder, but that, that's getting a bit fundamental, isn't it? Um, I think that, you know, as I say, that there, there, there are so many, it, it can bring new aspects of technology in much lighter weight, low cost form to whatever challenge you care to identify. You know, we, we've just picked out two from the agricultural sector, but you know, medical care is a really obvious one. You know, you, you can monitor people's health right there on, on their body, transmit back to data centers process that information and 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 so it becomes a platform for innovation and again these because it's quite cheap commodity components that largely drive the internet of things there's not a huge barrier to entry at least at the hardware level mm -hmm. you know, so so then it's just another realm in which software is you know to use the the cliche software is eating the world so, software companies can innovate great new ideas great new ways of getting more productive and build it in a very very easy commoditized hardware platform mm -hmm. which is again it brings huge opportunity but also some 
some challenges. You know, it, it's it's a bit of a wild west out there in terms of you know, standards and commercial practices. You know, we we, we recently saw a, a very high profile electric lock manufacturer um, who are you know, a very big name in that that sector, and they've of course moved into connected locks and connected devices because that's what people need to do. And recently, it was found that two of their major products were backdoored. Uh, or you know, they, they, there was a really serious vulnerability. So suddenly, every single one of these locks, and they're used in high security areas, like airports and and hospitals. Every single one of these locks is vulnerable until somebody gets out there and and, and patches the firmware. Mm -hmm. Which kind of brings us around to you know, I was, I was just talking last week to an IT asset management conference. You know, suddenly someone's going to ask, where, where have we put all these things? You know, yeah. facilities bought them. They deployed, you know, the security team maybe bought them, facilities deployed them. IT didn't even know about them until they appeared on the network. But suddenly IT has taken the calls yeah. and, uh, and, and we've got to do. Yeah. But IT can barely keep up with their own assets. I mean, if you audit the average company, if you hit an 80 percent accuracy that's success right let's be honest um and then we again with billions of issues items coming on it's going to be interesting i uh, wanted to ask you if you look at devops and, and some companies call it the application economy and so on uh, is devops then becoming more important i mean it's already having a critical role but it, 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 with internet of things that you talk about we move from a hardware world to a software world does the DevOps become more important and does Agile and all that stuff really become more than just something that some tech geeks working on? And, and me as a business manager, I need to have a finger in DevOps because I constantly need new software, if you will, to do new functions with this Internet of Things. It, again, I mean, it, I mean, this is a very powerful and very real movement for, for very good reasons in many cases. And of course, if you regard the Internet of Things as another innovation platform, then people are going to want to be as agile and rapid, you know, rapid, you know, rapid to market, rapid to update as their user story could need. Yeah. Um, you, you do. We also see a lot of devices which are in which the software is in the custody of the third party vendor. And again, you know, that that means that some vendors are going to be in that mindset of, you know, that DevOps mindset, they want to push out updates rapidly push push out, you know, in fact, you probably want to be with one of those vendors in case that vulnerability comes along or that opportunity comes along. It's a bit of a double edged sword, though, we, we recently saw a company called Revolve, which was a it's a domestic product, really a, a home automation product that was acquired by Nest to in turn have been you know, become a Google company. And because that software is under the control of the vendor and because Revolve had stopped being developed, they've actually recently switched all the devices off. You know, if, if it doesn't, you, know, you could have bought that device three years ago, used it happily for three years, and then it's not even that you don't get updates anymore, it just stops. They, they are no longer operating those devices. Your device is basically a brick. As in that again needs in you know if if that starts happening in the enterprise that could that could start getting interesting yeah hopefully you get some kind of end of life notification before <laughs> that happens uh look at your job today you are a product manager uh mm -hmm. you work with teams around the globe um you travel a lot you do certain things that are very traditional uh in the workforce Regardless of timeline, when the Internet of Things really started kicking, how do you think your day will change? Uh, is there anything that's different? Will email disappear? Will you be able to have your children summoned by an Uber-like service from kindergarten around rather than you have to leave the office and go get it, which is the highlight of the day? Uh, but, but still, uh, will our lives, will our jobs substantially change? Wouldn't it be lovely if email could disappear? Yeah, in, of course, in my line, I'm, I'm sort of thinking about what we do with our products as, as much as anything. But if, if you think about kind of the day to day, you know, the day to day life of, I don't know, shop shop floor, whatever I am, middle manager, I, I don't know what you call it. I, I think people have already really incorporated a lot of 
connected devices into their own life and even in terms of the, the getting to the office and back you know a lot, a lot of people's cars are highly connected now mine's not mine's old enough that you still hit it with a hammer when it breaks and it starts working again hopefully after enough hits but we see every day you know we you think there's, there's been a, a huge you know the, the fitness devices market ha, has got very big people's cars are, are well connected people are interacting with services you know, via, via things like their mobile phones, which you could argue is an Internet of Things device. It's a small, portable, connected device which does all sorts of interesting software stuff. So in terms of my job, I, I don't know, but I, I think probably those of us who work in offices every day or you know, any, any kind of commercial building are definitely going to see changes. You, know, you describe things like you know, climate control, but I, I think even just you know, what, when, when you when you think about the little bits of friction in a working day, I can see that being the kind of place where people are going to uh, apply solutions. You know, if, if if you've got to hunt for your badge in your bag before you can get through the door of the building, if if you, you know, and, and that's only after you spend ten minutes finding a parking space, and then you get into the building and there's a queue at the coffee machine. All all these things are are things that connecting up some of those devices, connecting up some of those areas of of infrastructure could make a difference and and that's just the first you know when as you walk through the door in the morning so i, I you know because the hardware is cheap and because you know because there's so much hunger for developing you know, innovative software to to solve problems i can see there being fundamental changes through in a lot of things and of course some of them will be genuinely valuable some of them will be fluff that will probably not last. Oh, so you mean my idea that the robot will come to you with a hot cup of tea because your blood sugar is low, uh, which it reads from your Fitbit, that is not productive? That's <laughs> that's extremely productive. But yeah, I mean, yeah. even just yeah. the, the board as you walk through the door in the morning in the office, wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice? You could each have one robot assigned to you. This is the jet lag talking now, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> <laughs> Well, just think about travel. I mean, the Internet of Things uh, that, that we get, the, the top, hey, on a plane, if you're lucky, you get Wi Fi. Okay, that's where we are today. There's so much we can do. And if, especially as business travel, there's one thing in vacation I like to just read a paperback. But when I'm on a six hour flight uh, and, and I, you know, there's only so much work I can do, um, I really hope that that can be improved because we spend an awful lot of time in the air or various transportation, trains, for example. Uh, where more can be done and where more information could be fed to us. Um, you travel a lot. What would you yeah. like to see more than anything else? I do. I mean, I, I saw the simplest example in, in, in Reading, where I, where I lived until fairly recently, which is a reasonably sort of tech-aware town. Uh, and just the simplest little thing, they, they have a good bus system, and as you're getting on the bus, as you get near the train station, Something talks to something, and there's a screen on the bus that usually just broadcasts commercial adverts, and suddenly it's got the next 20, the next 10 or so departures from Reading Station. So at that point, I immediately know if I've got to run or if I could got time for a coffee, you know, and, and just simple little things like that, connecting up, connecting up points of information, probably a couple of APIs involved. Someone, someone just thought of something that was a really neat idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that has real value, and and so ab absolutely. I mean, it's 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 one of those areas where the sky's the limit in terms of what could be innovated on this. And as I say, especially because it's not about trickery with soldering irons; it's just about trickery with lines of embedded code. It, it you know, the the there's going to be plenty of opportunity for this to to change our day. Well, like I said, not since the internet's early days have we had technology that is ready and is only limited by the human imagination. Uh, most other tools we've been given since then and before then was very much, this is what it can do, have fun with it. But as we talked, like what you just mentioned, uh, that's the beginning, those were the simplest thing. Once we get over that, once that's taken care of, once our children grow up, uh, use cases will appear that is just, Mind blowing. So. Well, that's it. I mean, this is a this is a, a sub two hundred dollar phone. Uh, as a Moto G, I like these a lot, and and that's got thirty sensors or you something. You can really in call it. a procurement office. You know, they can get a bit. Of oh, this is my own one. I have a real life phone. Um, but they, you know, that that's got twenty or thirty sensors in. It's got programmatic access to those sensors. Android, in this case, gives it that good framework. 
And, and but all of those sensors, apparently, if you go to the, the consumer electronics show in Vegas, I think it is each year, it, it's sort of a huge trade show full of people selling these tiny little widgets. You know, this one's a GPS, this one's a temperature sensor, this one's an accelerometer. Yeah. And, and they're cheap and they're quite easy to knit together and they come with their own little APIs. And if you can program, you know, they're probably Android is basically Linux, isn't it, with a with a bit of structure to it. So. So it really is like, you know, th this stuff 15 years ago, none of those, e each of those components would have been an expensive piece of specialist equipment. Mm. And, and now, you know, if, if you can think of, if, if it basically, if it moves, if it's got, if it's got a temperature, if it's at a certain altitude, if it's in a particular location, you can get all that stuff so cheaply from a hardware point of view. So yeah, absolutely. Suddenly we're opening up, you know, everything that a phone can do, we're now, all that technology is cheaply available to people to manage and to, to build devices. I guess the only problem is because it's so easy, there's a lot of really bad devices with really bad security and really, really big risks. And, and, and companies have to be aware that a lot of the time these things turn up in the business without anyone planning it. Mm. I, I used to joke about a page with, with software asset managers who I talk to a lot. I used to talk about a page in the Oracle Software Investment Guide, which is basically this huge thing of complex rules about how you have to pay for Oracle. But it, it talked for years about a forklift. And if your forklift was talking to the database, then you had to have X number of licenses, which I always used to kind of think was a weird example. But then last year, Forbes wrote an article about the connected forklift. And, and these days, apparently, you buy a forklift and it comes with I don't know, they listed about 15 different sensors, bits of technology, monitoring devices, radio beacons. So suddenly a lot of this stuff, good or bad, is is already in the business. Yeah. And so how is it going to change our job? Well, firstly, it's going to make that forklift super productive and, you know, from a, it gives IT the opportunity to think of things. You know, maybe if that forklift starts to break, we can have somebody sent out to it before they anyone has to notice it and call a technician. That's good. Yeah. And they can use a 3D printer to create the part that they need right there as well. Yeah, but then next time around, the next time there's a horrible worm and, and, and people have, you know, because it's a forklift company, they maybe didn't, you know, I'm sure some of them are perfectly good, but a lot of companies building IoT devices aren't necessarily, they're focused on just getting stuff to market quickly. Security, access controls, you know, that, that kind of stuff can fall by the wayside very easily in that kind of market. And that that's to companies, you know, we, we've seen some major hacks through connected devices, you know, one, one in the big retailer in America that was hacked through its air conditioning systems, for example, was a, a huge story. And uh, Well, you shut up this air conditioning in a Saudi Arabian office, then you have an issue at hand. So different if you do it here. Uh, well, 150 years ago, so we, we boiled water to measure what altitude we were at. And today we're worrying about technology is so, so smart that we can't control it. So we, we're moving in the right direction, at least. It was as always, John. It was great talking to you. Uh, your pleasure to have in the zoo, and hopefully we can do this again. One day you'll get me when I'm not off the back of a long haul flight as well. Because every no, time that's like you're the best, because the crazy stuff comes up. <laughs> Thank you, John. Take Thanks care. Rest you out there. Take care. Be safe. Bye.